Hello everybody. Let's talk about the bony pelvis. Okay, so this class is about the orientation of the bony pelvis, how to hold it in the anatomical position, what is true pelvis and what is false pelvis and what is meant by pelvic brim. So let's see all of that one by one. So the bony pelvis is basically a ring of bone consisting of two hip bones or os coxae on either side as well as the sacrococcygeal part of the vertebra posteriorly. Now, if you were to look at it from the front, the pubic parts are connected by the pubic symphysis, which is this joint right in the middle. And then you have the sacroiliac joints on either side. So there are three joints in the complete pelvic girdle. How to hold it in the anatomical position? The what we have to remember is the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis have to come in the same coronal plane all right so let's draw that and label so you have the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis over there and let's just place the coronal plane and that is how it should look all right so when you place it during your exams try to hold it against a plane surface such as a table or a wall and you will be safe so in that place when you do hold it make sure that the asis and the pubic symphysis are in the same plane and that is the anatomical position of the pelvis and this is how the pelvis looks in the human body. Now let's look at the subdivisions of the pelvis. So the pelvis can be divided into three regions which is, uh, which is demarcated by the pelvic brim. The lower part is called the lesser pelvis and the upper part is called the greater pelvis. All right. So the pelvic brim divides the pelvic cavity into a greater pelvis on top and a lesser pelvis below. Let's look at the pelvic brim now. What structures form the boundary of the pelvic brim? So the pelvic brim is also called the plane of the pelvic inlet and it is formed by these structures, the sacral promontory and the sacral ala. Then you have the linear terminalis which is formed by the arcuate line of the ilium the iliopubic eminence as well as the pectin pubis and finally we have the upper border of the symphysis pubis. So all of these together form the pelvic brim. Let us look at it from another view. So this is a pelvis from the oblique view. Let's remove one half of it so that we can take a look at the pelvic brim. So let's remove that half, right? So there you have the sacral promontory, the sacral ala, the linear terminalis and the upper border of the symphysis pubis. Joining with the complete arc on the other side, we have a complete pelvic brim forming the boundary between the greater pelvis above and the lesser pelvis below. Now let's look at the lesser pelvis, also called the true pelvis. So the lesser pelvis is bound superiorly by the pelvic brim or the pelvic inlet and inferiorly the similar boundary is called the pelvic outlet which is here. In between these two boundaries we have the pelvic cavity which is bound by certain bony structures. So it is a bony arc and let's see the components of that arc. So pelvic cavity is bound both anteriorly and posteriorly by basically these two bones. In front, we have the symphysis and the body as well as the two rami of the pubis. And behind, we have the pelvic surface of the sacrum and the coccyx. On the lateral side, we have this quadrangular bit of bone formed by the pelvic surface of the ilium and the ischia. Right? And this arc is completed on either side by the sacrotuberous and the sacrospinous ligaments. Let us look at the greater pelvis, also called the false pelvis. So the greater pelvis is seen above and in front of the pelvic inlet and it is formed by both the iliac fossae and the ala of the sacrum. So anteriorly, but it has no bony wall. It becomes part of the abdominal cavity. So let's see how that happens. Here you have it. This is the anterior wall and that is the limit of the false pelvis or the greater pelvis there is no anterior bony boundary to the greater pelvis. So finally let's review what you have learned about the bony pelvis and its subdivisions. There is a true pelvis below, there is a false pelvis above 
and simply put these two are divided by the pelvic brim also called the plane of pelvic inlet. Thank you so much. If you really like my video, don't forget to subscribe, share and like. And when you subscribe, don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get the notifications for my upcoming videos. So see you till the next time. Thank you.